Riding a bike outside in the winter is fun, but your hands can get very cold. A good way to keep your hands warm is to use handlebar mitts, which are also called pogies. This video shows how to make your own pogies to keep your hands warm. The design is based on an article found on the bikepacking.com website titled, Make Your Own Ultralight Pogies. Changes were made to the design to better fit the handlebar on a Trek 1120 and to accommodate removable liners. There are two types of fabric pieces for this project, the outer shell fabric and the removable liner fabric. The outer shell fabric should be a tight knit fabric that blocks the wind, such as nylon ripstop or a fully waterproof nylon material. The removable liner fabric should be a heat trapping fabric such as wool or flannel. Start with a rectangular piece of fabric 14 inches tall by 31 inches wide or 36 centimeters tall by 79 centimeters wide. Fold the fabric in half along the longest side and place the fabric so the fold is on the left side. Measure up 4 inches or 10 centimeters from the bottom left corner and make a mark. Measure over 5 inches or 13 centimeters from the bottom left corner and make a mark. Draw a line connecting the two marks. Measure in 1 and 1 half inches or 4 centimeters from the bottom right corner and make a mark. Measure up 6 inches or 15 centimeters from the bottom right corner and make a mark. Draw a line connecting the two marks. Use a triangle to draw a line that is perpendicular to the line you just drew. The length of this line is four and one quarter inches or 11 centimeters. Measure over eight and one half inches or 22 centimeters from the top left corner and make a mark. Use a triangle to draw a line that is perpendicular to the top of the fabric. The length of this line is four and one quarter inches or 11 centimeters. Use a template to draw an arc that connects the two lines. Cut along the lines drawn on the fabric. I use a rotary fabric cutter, but you can use scissors as well. Here is what the finished fabric pieces look like. Use this procedure to draw lines where folds will be made in a fabric piece. Be sure to draw on the side of the fabric that will be the inside. Make three marks spaced three quarters of an inch or two centimeters apart from the bottom right corner of the fabric. Make three marks spaced three quarters of an inch or two centimeters apart from the top right corner of the fabric. Draw lines connecting the marks so there are three parallel lines. Repeat drawing the three parallel lines on the left side of the unfolded fabric. In a similar manner, draw three parallel lines that are spaced three quarters of an inch or two centimeters apart from the top of the fabric. Utility cords secure the pogies to the handlebar and shape the opening so it is easier to slip your hand in. Fold down one corner of the fabric to the third fold line drawn on the fabric. Use an iron set to the correct temperature for the outer shell fabric and seal in the fold. Repeat this fold on the remaining five corners of the fabric piece. Sew down the triangular fold on all six corners of the fabric. Fold down the edges of the fabric twice, once on each fold line to create the cord channels. Do this for the two side cord channels and the top cord channel. Sew the side cord channels close to the inside edge of the folds. Sew the top cord channel close to the bottom edge of the fold. Cut a 31 inch or 79 centimeter piece of utility cord. I used 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter diameter utility cord. Run the cord through the top cord channel. I used a chopstick to help guide the cord. Cut a 20 inch or 51 centimeter piece of utility cord. Fold the fabric in half so the inside of the fabric is facing out. Run the cord through both side cord channels. Use a cord lock to secure the cord in place. Use a match to carefully seal the edges of the freshly cut cord. With the fabric piece still folded in half so the inside of the fabric is facing out, line up the edges of the fabric piece. 
place clips along the curved edges to hold the edges in place. Sew the curved edge using a 1 half inch or 12 millimeter seam allowance. Place clips along the straight edges to hold the edges in place. Sew the straight edges using a 1 half inch or 12 millimeter seam allowance. However, do not sew all the way to the folded edge. Stop at 1 inch or 3 centimeters from the folded edge. Cut a 3 inch or 8 centimeter long piece of belting material. I am using 1 half inch or 12 millimeter wide belting material. Fold the belting material in half and sandwich the fabric piece in between. Finish sewing the belting material and fabric piece all the way to the folded edge of the fabric. Carefully turn the outer shell inside out. This completes the procedure for an outer shell. The outer shell can be used by itself or a removable liner may be added for more warmth. The procedure for creating a removable liner is nearly identical to the procedure for creating the outer shell. Draw the same fold lines on the removable liner fabric piece. Fold down the full width of the removable liner fabric twice, once on each fold line. Sew the sides of the fabric piece. Sew the top of the fabric piece. Fold the fabric piece in half with the inside of the fabric facing out. Line up the edges of the curved edge. Place clips along the curved edge to hold the edge in place. Sew the curved edge using a 1 half inch or 12 millimeter seam allowance. Place clips along the straight edges to hold the edges in place. Sew the straight edges as before, adding the belting material loop just before the finished seam. Cut an 11 inch or 28 centimeter piece of utility cord. Run the utility cord through the loop and then through the cord lock. Use a match to seal the ends of the utility cord. Carefully turn the removable liner inside out. The removable liners attach to the outer shell using snaps. Push the decorative prong through the outer shell at the desired location. Turn the outer shell over and use a pencil eraser to help push the prongs through the fabric. Lay the decorative prong on the concave metal support piece. Place the socket onto the decorative prong. Place the setter tool onto the socket. Use a hammer to hit the setter tool and bend the decorative prongs into the socket. Push the non-decorative prong through the removable liner at the desired location and use a pencil eraser to help push the prongs through the fabric. Lay the non-decorative prong on the concave metal support piece. Place the stud onto the non-decorative prongs. Place the setter tool onto the stud. Use a hammer to hit the setter tool and bend the non-decorative prongs into the stud. Repeat the process of installing a snap until there are four snaps that attach the removable liner to the outer shell. Carefully feed the removable liner into the outer shell and snap the snaps. The pogies are finished and ready to be installed on a bike. Installing the pogies on a handlebar is easy. Guide the smaller opening of the pogie over the end of the handlebar. Make sure the end of the pogie does not get caught on the shifter levers or the brake lever. When the end of the pogie is in place, tighten the cord lock for the smaller opening. Gently turn the pogie inside out through the large opening until the utility cord that runs through the belting loop is visible. Wrap the utility cord over the end of the handlebar and tighten the cord lock. Gently turn the pogie right side out again. Adjust the cord lock on the larger opening so the opening is a little more round and is large enough to fit your hand. There you have it pogies to keep your hands warm on long winter rides. Now go out and give them a try.